at the Morocco Museum of Natural History, we're really passionate about things that are found in the ground. And it all began when I was five. I started looking for some clams, squishing my feet in some mud at a local lake, and uh, stepped on an arrowhead. When I pulled my bleeding foot out, my mother wanted me to go to the emergency room, but I was more interested in looking at this arrowhead. Uh, my grandfather took it to Gulf Oil and they analyzed it. It wound up it was a 2,000-year-old arrowhead. It wasn't a modern one. But it had been found by some modern Indians and was reshaped and resharpened. And that made a whole history about this one little arrowhead that stuck in my foot. From that time on, people would find any event that I could go to. Somebody's disking their field. I would follow the tractor. And I'd pick up fossils and I'd pick up arrowheads and I'd looked in almost every hill and creek in East Texas and just found marvelous stuff. Well, that passion transferred to my family. And my children have been on dinosaur digs and on archaeology digs. And we wound up having so much in our house that we thought, well, maybe we need to share this with everybody else and just build a museum because we were going from school to school at times. And it was getting kind of hard to carry stuff with us. And uh, the children said, we'll help you, Dad. We're going to help do this. We're going to do that. So we put together a model. Local television station heard about it. They came over. They were looking at all the dinosaurs in our house. Uh, you couldn't get into the dining room, the guest bedroom, down the hallway. And while I was being interviewed, my wife walked in and had a stew pot and a humorous from a hadrosaur and interrupted my whole interview and said, if you don't get this dinosaur bone, off of my kitchen table, I'm going to make caveman stew. <laughs> they wound up putting that on the TV. <laughs> so we kind of became a little bit famous. Uh, we have the project done. That's the Naranjo Museum. It's 10,000 square feet. Our oldest uh, exhibit is Acostogenesis, which is the oldest rock at 4.2 billion years. Next to it is a stromatolite that's 3.8 which is a kind of bacteria which started uh, oxygenating the earth. Prior to that, it was only about 3% oxygen. We fully believe that if a person gets passionate about something, then they can pursue their dreams. Even though they may get passionate about dinosaurs, that may lead them into the dream of being a, a really good doctor or a heart surgeon or a school teacher. It's all about getting their dreams started and going. This, the first artist that joined our group was Professor Peter Andrew and his, his wife Nancy. And all this background here, oops, wrong one. All this background here is stuff that they painted for us. This is a three-year-old brachiosaur, and we're really trying to be complete. We've got pterodactyls flying around. Even behind the brachiosaur's tail is three big pieces of carpet like, like a brachiosaur would do. Carpalite is fossilized dinosaur poo. And when you slice that open, it has pine needles in it. So brachiosaurs would be perfect pets for kids around here. I, I hear that all the time. And then I tell them, when he's grown, he's going to have 20-foot tall legs and he might step on their house. Then they decide they don't want a brachiosaur for a pet. Up here is the first thing that you see when you walk into Dinosaur Hall, a big T-Rex and we've got all sort of dioramas where you can actually see what the dinosaur lived in and what his uh, ecosystem was like. Because when we're digging up a bone, we also get leaves, we get twigs, we get chewed on twigs, uh, we get petrified wood, we get insects, we get snails, we get turtles. So we can pretty much determine what the entire environment that that dinosaur lived in and how he functioned. We also do research. In Lufkin, Texas, I took my dinosaur eggs, and there's a city penny head. See the jaw and the eyeball right there? And there's his spine, there's all the vertebrae of his spine. We took this egg to one of the local hospitals and cat scanned it, and it took us about three days to get tweaked just right, and all of a sudden that appeared. We jumped up and down, we've got a baby, we got a baby, because there's a baby inside the egg, an embryo. Let me get y'all to help me on this one. Oh. That's a leg, and that's a leg. So what is this right here, guys? A tail. A tail. And that's an arm, and that's an arm. 
So what is this right there? That's a head. We're finding these in six out of my seven eggs. On this one, there's a nostril hole, a nostril hole, an eyeball, a neck. Here comes an arm with three fingers. Here comes a femur and a whole leg down there. That egg was probably pretty close to hatching and the mom abandoned it. And then on this one, you can see a jaw and here's the skull and an eyeball and there goes an arm and there goes an arm and there goes a spine. Uh, pretty fascinating that you don't have to destroy an egg now to see if there was a baby dinosaur in that egg. This is a dig in Oklahoma. All of this is lava. You can't hardly take a step without almost twisting your ankle. This is the adapasaur that we dug out in that area and it's 100% uh, fossil. This is a dimetrodon right here. Uh, with all that lava, that was there when the dinosaurs were there and when these reptiles were there. And so we recreated an entire drama that looks exactly like what their environment would have been. This is in Hell Creek. And Hell Creek formation is in Montana. And what we do is we'll walk, one person will walk along the top, another one will walk in the middle, and then one will walk down at the bottom. And when we see a bone, we yell out, dinosaur bone, or whatever. And that's how we found Marianne Hadrosaur. This is how complete the tail was of Marianne Hadrosaur. That's all the spines and chevrons. We found her foot. And on her foot, for the first time ever, on a plant-eating dinosaur, uh, were hooves. And right here is a hook. That's an umbel bone, and then that's an umbel bone with a hook, and that's one. And right over here, you can see a blow-up, and right here is skin on her foot. And so that's what dinosaur skin looks like, right there. This is Mary Ann complete. She's 26 feet long and approximately 20 feet tall. From right here at her pelvis all the way down her tail to right there is covered with skin. She has several hundred tendons running up her spine. And right here is the foot. We put a fake foot on there so people could actually see her uh, remarkable foot up close. On this particular day, I was walking along the top. My son was walking in the middle and Charlie that works with us was walking on the bottom. My son found this. He just plucked it out, wrapped it up with aluminum foil to protect it, put it in his backpack, the old dinosaur bone. We all came and dug all around, didn't find anything. When we got back to Lufkin and opened the foil up, can y'all see that head there? That's a pachycephalosaur. And then here's the pachycephalosaur as it's completed. His defense system was a really thick head. These were so nobody could bite his neck. And we did find at times uh, rib cages with a circle with fractured ribs in them. So if somebody was going to attack him, he would attack first and just hit him in the ribs. I was walking along down here one day and started seeing little pieces of dinosaur frill, uh, thinking it was maybe a triceratops. Had to, on an 80 degree slope, had to make footholds and handholds to dig it and uh, get my way up and right. Here, found a bone layer. And on this bone layer, if you've ever seen anybody look happier than this, that's a triceratops head. It's got the two brow horns, an eyeball, and uh, I was yelling, yippee! <laughs> okay, this is a Peter Andrew painting, and Peter doesn't paint a whole lot of dinosaurs, I don't think, but he was wanting to help, and he's such a gracious man, and he says, what do we need to do? I said, well, it kind of looked like this, it kind of looked like that. And he said, well, what colors? Because he's an artist. I said, it doesn't quite matter what colors because no fossils show up with color. They're always black or rusty brown. And let's just use our imaginations. And I think he came up with a marvelous scene. We're going to have a, a, about a 24 foot long, as big as a suburban triceratops standing there. In front, we have these cases with all sort of smaller fossils. We have everything from tendons from that triceratops to uh, we even have right over here a 50 million year old cockroach. And uh, all the women love seeing that one. <laughs> we have all sort of dinosaur teeth here. So in front of every one of the dioramas, 
in addition to having a full fossil at it, we also have the, the type of things that were in the environment of uh, the dinosaur. This is going back into the Devonian. The Devonian was uh, the age of fish. And in front, we have the fossil cases right here. And then in the diorama, which is about eight feet long, we have three-dimensional representation so the children can actually see what that fossil would have looked like uh, when it was alive. This is the Ordovician. Uh, it's even older and we're doing the same type of pattern there. Uh, as you come in the beginning of the museum, you start in the Precambrian at the four billion year age, and then we wind all the way through the dinosaurs into the ice ages, and then into uh, man. And because Vikings is real big on TV right now, we have a complete Viking display. On this side, we have early man, caveman, uh, the Egyptians, uh, the Greeks, and the Romans. And most of the things that the Egyptians and the Greeks uh, made still works. I can't get a buckle on a belt to last more than a year. And those are 2,000 years old, and they still work. Uh, we go all the way to modern man. And the geniusness of the people at NASA, President Kennedy said, uh, we're going to put a man on the moon before the decade is over, and we're going to bring him back safely. I thought the last part of that sentence was pretty smart. <laughs> there actually was a plan to just get a man there and not worry about it too much. Uh, but Kennedy actually wanted him to come back to be able to talk about it. This is a moon rock right here that NASA gave us, uh, and we've got it for another two months. It's in a pyramid that's made out of, uh, what is that clear stuff called? Acrylics. Acrylics. Resin. 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 Anyway, the thing that's so ingenious about it is you can stand in front of it and it reflects all the sides of the pyramid so you don't have to go around. And number two, the pyramid was the greatest accomplishment of ancient man, the, the uh, pyramids of Giza, and the greatest accomplishment of modern man has been going to the moon. And then we also have an EVA suit that uh, you can get your picture in. And then we have the uh, uniform that was worn by uh, an astronaut. And we have a, two tires from the space shuttle that actually went into space. And then a whole explanation of how the astronauts ate when they were in outer space. All of this has led to children's books because we're still trying to create passion. That's me, and that's baby Eniosaur right there, and this is mommy Eniosaur. Mommy Eniosaur is about the size of a Suburban, and baby Eniosaur is about the size of a large German Shepherd. And we found mommy Eniosaur on top of baby Eniosaur, and we found a lot of lava around. And what we think is mommy Eniosaur knew she was probably gonna die uh, from asphyxiation from sour gas or bad gas from the volcanoes, so she covered up her baby with herself hoping that it would live. Unfortunately, both of them died, and now they're happy in our museum. And we're writing books about baby Enosaur is born. And we're writing books like uh, Baby Enosaur and the Mystery of the Flying Reptile. Everybody knows what that is, a uh, pterodactyl. And if we can inspire kids, and we can inspire adults. The interesting thing that adults all come in and they say, we're bringing our kids because all these kids are just so interested in dinosaurs. And then the parents have more fun than the kids do. <laughs> and the kids' mouths are like this the entire time. Wow. I appreciate talking to you and hope you come out to the museum.